What if I told you that the most expensive military airlifter in Europe's history, the pride of Airbus and a supposed replacement for the legendary Hercules, spent two decades trying to dethrone a plane first built when Elvis was still in high school? and somehow lost. While the world was busy inventing smartphones and self-driving cars, Europe spent nearly 30 years and 30 billion euros designing a modern marvel, the A400M Atlas, to finally replace America's unstoppable C-130 Hercules. But instead of killing the Hercules, it accidentally made it immortal. So today, we're breaking down how Airbus tried and failed to replace the C-130, and what the whole saga teaches us about ambition, bureaucracy, and why sometimes good enough beats perfect. It all starts in the late 1970s and early 80s. NATO was split between two realities. The Cold War was fading, but the need for mobility wasn't. European air forces were flying tired old fleets of C-130 Hercules and Transall C-160s, and the question on everyone's lips was, why are we still relying on American planes? Enter Airbus, the new poster child of European unity. The A300 and A310 were already proving Europe could take on Boeing, so naturally, the next challenge was, let's take on Lockheed Martin. Thus, in 1982, the idea of a European-built tactical airlifter was born. It would be faster than the C-130, bigger than the C-160, and best of all, completely European. The first name? FEMA, Future International Military Airlifter. France, Germany, the UK, Italy, and Spain all signed on. But as anyone who's ever seen a European joint project knows, this was less Top Gun and more EU committee meeting with wings. By the 1990s, FEMA had evolved into something called Euroflag, a partnership between several European nations and Airbus. The mission sounded simple, build an aircraft that can replace both the C-130 and C-160. But each country had its own vision of what that meant. France wanted it to handle Africa's dirt strips and hot climates. Germany wanted it strong enough to haul armored vehicles. The UK wanted long-range capabilities for global operations. Spain wanted industrial work share, jobs, not just airplanes. The result? A specification sheet so contradictory it practically broke physics. Airbus engineers realized they were designing a plane that needed to be as agile as a Hercules, as strong as a C-17, and as cheap as neither. Still, the idea was irresistible. One aircraft to rule them all. By 1999, the project had an official name, A400M Atlas, a name that sounded powerful, mythic, and maybe a little overconfident. To power this dream, Europe decided on a brand new engine, the Europrop TP400 D6. On paper, it was genius, a four-nation collaboration producing the world's most powerful turboprop. Each engine could generate over 11,000 shaft horsepower, with counter-rotating propellers the size of truck tires. In practice, it was a bureaucratic nightmare. Rolls-Royce, SEMA, now Safran, MTU, and ITP all took pieces of the design. That meant every engineering decision had to go through four companies and at least five government committees. At one point, a French engineer joked, if we don't design engines, we negotiate them. When the prototype finally ran, the gearbox vibrated so violently that ground crews nicknamed it the Blender. Then came software issues. Early versions of the control system couldn't decide on how much torque to deliver, so the engine sometimes disagreed about how hard to turn the propellers. Imagine four chefs sharing one oven, each setting the temperature differently, and you've got the A400M's first test runs. The A400M was supposed to make its maiden flight in 2007 and enter service by 2009. Instead, the project missed every possible milestone like a drunk GPS. By 2008, it was already 5 billion euros over budget and three years late. By 2010, Airbus executives were openly begging for government bailouts, warning that without more funding, the entire project could collapse. Defense ministers across Europe were furious. Germany's defense chief at the time called the program a scandal. The UK publicly threatened to cancel its order. Behind closed doors, Airbus management admitted the uncomfortable truth. The A400M was too heavy, too complex, and too expensive. It couldn't even meet its original payload targets. The plane designed to replace the Hercules couldn't carry what it promised. Meanwhile, Lockheed Martin was quietly rolling out the C-130J Super Hercules, featuring digital avionics, new Rolls-Royce engines, and reliability honed by decades of war. While Europe argued about propellers, the Americans were already flying. After endless delays, the A400M finally took off for the first time on December 11, 2009 from Seville, Spain. Crowds cheered. The aircraft looked stunning, sleek, powerful, futuristic. At last, Europe's Hercules killer had arrived. 
But inside Airbus, engineers knew they were far from done. Test pilots reported that the flight control software had quirks, the autopilot sometimes misbehaved, and the engine management system would occasionally throw phantom error codes mid-flight. Still, the media hailed it as a triumph of European unity. That optimism lasted until the paratrooper tests. Turns out, when soldiers jumped from both side doors at once, the airflow slammed them into the fuselage. In other words, the A400M couldn't safely do one of the Hercules' most basic jobs. It was like designing a car that couldn't turn left. On May 9th, 2015, an A400M performing a test flight near Seville crashed shortly after takeoff, killing four of the six crew members. Investigators soon discovered the cause. A software configuration error had disabled three of the four engines mid-flight. It was a tragedy that shouldn't have happened. Production halted. Governments paused deliveries. Airbus stock plunged. The press branded it Europe's military Titanic. For many inside Airbus, this was the lowest point in the company's history. But instead of killing the program, the crash forced a reckoning. Airbus overhauled its testing, rewrote its flight software, and committed to rebuilding trust from scratch. It was painful, but necessary. From 2016 onwards, Airbus began what could only be described as a redemption arc. They fixed the software, they lightened the airframe, they added proper terrain following radar and improved its ability to refuel other aircraft mid-air. And gradually, the A400M began to live up to its promise. In 2017, French and German A400Ms flew combat missions in Mali, delivering troops and cargo to remote airstrips where few other planes dared to land. During the 2021 Afghanistan evacuation, A400Ms from Germany, France and Spain carried thousands of civilians out of Kabul under fire. The aircraft proved it could handle the chaos of war. But even with that success, the world had changed. The C-130J was now the global standard for tactical lift. The US, Air Force, Royal Air Force, Japan, Canada and dozens of others relied on it daily. Airbus had arrived late to a race that had already finished. So where does that leave the A400M now? As of 2025, Airbus has delivered over 120 A400Ms to countries including Germany, France, Spain, the UK, and Malaysia. It's capable, fast, and versatile. It can haul 37 tons of cargo, more than a C-130J but less than a C-17. It cruises at nearly Mach 0.72, faster than any turboprop. It can carry 116 troops, two helicopters, or even a small tank. And it looks absolutely stunning doing it. But here's the problem. No one else wants it. The A400M is too expensive for smaller nations and too specialized for larger ones. The unit cost sits around $118 million, nearly triple that of a C-130J. And the C-130 can operate from dirt, ice, or jungle with far fewer maintenance headaches. That's why even Germany, one of the main partners, secretly ordered a fleet of new C-130Js in 2019 to handle missions the A400M couldn't. Ouch. So how does a 70-year-old design keep beating Europe's best engineers? Because the C-130 Hercules was built with one rule. Make it simple, make it strong, make it last. It can carry 20 tons of cargo, land on runways shorter than your driveway, and keep flying after losing an engine or two. It's the flying pickup truck of the skies, and its design philosophy is timeless. Where the A400M is packed with digital systems that need pristine conditions, the Hercules just shrugs off abuse. You can change a C-130's engine with a forklift and a hangar floor. Pilots say flying one is like wrestling a bear. It fights you, but it loves you. There's a reason more than 2,500 C-130's have been built, and new ones still roll off Lockheed Martin's assembly line every month. It's not nostalgia, it's proof of concept. So did Airbus fail? Not entirely. The A400M is in many ways a masterpiece. It's quieter, faster, and more modern than anything else in its class. It proved Europe can design and build a complex, world-class military aircraft without American help. But it also exposed a fundamental truth about engineering. When you try to please everyone, you end up building something that pleases no one. The A400M was born out of compromise. Too heavy for short trips, too costly for small nations, and too late for the market. Meanwhile, the Hercules just kept showing up. In hurricanes, wars, humanitarian crises, you name it. Even NASA still uses modified C-130s. Some of the oldest ones are older than the pilots flying them. The A400M will keep flying for decades, no doubt, but it will never replace the Hercules. Instead, it stands as a tribute to it. Proof that even in an age of billion euro software and composite wings, sometimes the old ways still work best. Somewhere tonight, a C-130 is flying a mission over the desert. Its engines howl like thunder. Its wings flex under load, and its crew trusts it completely. At another base, an A400M waits on the ramp. 
sleek, silver, and perfectly engineered. It will take off, fly flawlessly, and land precisely where it's supposed to. Both are brilliant in their own way, but one was built to last forever, and the other was built to prove a point. And that's how Airbus, in trying to outdo the Hercules, accidentally made us realize just how perfect the Hercules already was. Because in aviation, as in life, progress isn't always about replacing the old. It's about respecting the things that got it right the first time.